Okay, I think we're live. It is Saturday, 11.15 uh, p.m. And forgive me, guys, I have not used OBS Studios in, in quite some time. I've been using StreamYards, but since this is a solo stream, I wanted to give you guys better quality. So I would like to talk about speaker impedance. I've seen several questions come up on the forums about what's the difference between an 8-ohm speaker and a 4 ohm speaker so i wanted to kind of do a very basic video here we could do something that's more in detail um, at a later date i'm going to keep this pretty short and concise um, i hope everybody could see me okay so what i'd like to do is do some screen sharing with you on speaker stuff so I think there's a misconception sometimes when people think an 8-ohm speaker is better than a 4-ohm speaker or a 4-ohm speaker is better than an 8-ohm speaker. Um, it's really, it depends on the design. It depends on the engineer's goal when they made the speaker. It depends how it's going to be used. And I wanted to kind of drop some knowledge on you guys about that. So I'm hoping right now that you're seeing my screen share because I don't really have a way to monitor this. But anyways, we have an article called Loudspeaker Sensitivity and Impedance Explained. I will link it up in this video. I do recommend you read it. It's important. And one thing that really kind of stands out um, about this article is about the impedance of a speaker and how you can't just go by a single number. When you look at a manufacturer's website and they say a speaker is 8 ohms or a speaker is 4 ohms, Without actually seeing an impedance graph, it's a pretty useless speaker spec because you don't know how they're measuring the impedance. You don't know at what frequency that rating is from because the only time a speaker is, is a constant load at one particular um, rating is at DC, basically. And you don't listen to a speaker at DC. Um, you listen to a speaker from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and over that range, the impedance fluctuates, it goes up and down depending on whether it's inductive or capacitive or how the drivers interact with the crossover. So um, it's interesting to note that there are speakers that are 8 ohm rated and 4 ohm rated and the sensitivity also changes on that as well. So if you look at, if you keep things, everything constant except for the impedance of a speaker and for argument's sake you have two identical speakers, one speaker is 8 ohms rated, the other speaker is 4 ohms rated. With any given voltage, if you keep voltage fixed, let's say at 2.83 volts, if that 8 ohm speaker is rated at 87 dB at 2.83 volts, then that equivalent speaker in a 4 ohm version would be rated at 90 dB. So you gain 3 dB of sensitivity or, th or 3 dB of loudness with all other things being equal. So that's kind of an important thing to note. And uh, people ask, well, why are some speakers 8 ohms and some speakers 4 ohms? And sometimes that has a lot to do with um, the driver specs that they're using in the system. If you take a speaker that has, for example, three 8-inch woofers in the cabinet, and each woofer is rated at 12 ohms, well, if they put all three of those woofers in parallel with each other, then the equivalent impedance of those three woofers in parallel would be 4 ohms. It's basically the reciprocal sum of the resistances, of the reciprocated resistances. So 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12, you sum that up and you take the inverse of that and you get 4 ohms. Well, that's fine like in a consumer speaker with 3 8 inch drivers, but when you're dealing with commercial or you're dealing with large powered systems that have woofers with larger voice coils, like a 3 4 inch voice coil, and, and the speaker is designed to handle a lot more power, the wire that goes around the voice coil tends to be lower gauge. And as a result, the woofer impedance tends to be lower uh, in resistance. So you might use, in that case, um, three 6-ohm woofers. And when you put three 6-ohm woofers in parallel, you get a 2-ohm equivalent. So you could start seeing how a speaker impedance can go really low. And we'll talk about what that, how that could affect the amplifier. Now, there are, there are tricks around that manufacturers can do. They could put speakers, they could put woofers in series as opposed to parallel. But then again, you're reducing sensitivity because if you put two 8 ohm woofers in, se in series, that's an equivalent resistance of 16 ohms as opposed to two 8 ohm woofers in parallel, which is four ohms. So of course, if you go across 2.83 volts and you do that, it's, it's V squared over R. So you do 
and you divide that by four, that gives you two watts, but 2.83, and you divide by 16, and that gives you half a watt. So that's a difference of fourfold in terms of how much power that the amplifier is dissipating just by how they're wiring the woofers, whether they're doing them in series or parallel. So you can see the lower impedance speaker has a, a sensitivity advantage, and that's why you get some of the pro speakers or some of the large scale speakers that have a lot of output capability tend to be lower impedance. So I wanted to um, show you what an impedance graph would look like on a speaker because most manufacturers don't give you this. Most manufacturers will literally give you uh, just one singular rating. So you look at this speaker from Infinity. This is like a $400 tower. It's an Infinity Primus P363. I think this, I think this model might be discontinued now. But it was actually pretty well rated. Um, people like this speaker. It's a good speaker for what it is for a $400 tower. And they rated this at 8 ohms. And if you look, this is 8 ohms right here. 8 is the line here. So this is the impedance and this is the phase. I don't want to talk too much about phase, but in general, if you have too much of a sharp phase angle um, at a very short distance and frequency, that could cause amplifier problems. But I don't want to get too far into that. I want to keep this pretty general. Let's just focus on the impedance. You can see here you have a saddle point because this, woof, this system is tuned. And this is about where the tuning frequency is, which looks like it's about 45 hertz. So in order to meet an 8 ohm spec, if you go by IEC standard, which is a standard measurement method for measuring uh, loudspeaker impedance and sensitivity, they want, you, they want to see whatever the, the loudspeaker company rates the speaker. Let's say they rated it 8 ohms. They want to see that impedance be no less than 80% that rating from 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. So in this case, an 8 ohm speaker should, ha should have no dips lower than about 6.4 ohms. You can see in this case that the infinity is really not. It's, it's, it dips down uh, to about 5.5 ohms at its tuning frequency. Then over here at around 100 to 200 hertz, it goes well below 4 ohms here. So they, they could have uh, optimized this crossover a little bit better. But this is the interesting thing. At 10 kilohertz, this is something that you, that's unexpected to see the impedance of the speaker dip down to 4 ohms for an 8 ohm system when everything else is pretty close to 8 ohms up here if you take the kind of magnitude of this. What this what's happening here is Harman was being very clever. They tried to use the cheapest tweeter possible in this case because of budget and what they try to do is they try to increase the system sensitivity by going to a 4 ohm tweeter in an 8 ohm system. And the reason why they did that is if they were to use an 8 ohm tweeter and wanted to get the kind of output and, and sensitivity from an 8 ohm, they would have had to use a tweeter that had a larger motor structure and maybe even a, a bigger waveguide on it. And those kind of things cost more money. So they went with a 4 ohm tweeter and they stuck it into an 8 ohm speaker. I don't agree with this kind of design philosophy. I think they probably should have spent a couple more bucks and put a motor structure that was a little bigger and a better tweeter. But overall, the speaker is a good speaker, and to their defense, there's not a whole lot of program material um, you know, above 10 kilohertz, so you don't dissipate a lot of power. So most amplifiers can handle a forum load like this. Um, there's only very few exceptions. Some of the earlier Class D amplifiers, like the older ICE modules, they did not like uh, a low impedance above about five kilohertz. So this speaker on an older Pioneer ICE amplifier could potentially be a problem when driven at full power. It could potentially shut the receiver off. And that's an important thing to note too, is the receivers today have a lot of short circuit protection, a lot of nanny control over thermal protection. You're probably not gonna blow out a receiver driving it with a forum load if it's not fully capable of driving that forum load, but you might shut it off. And you might be at a party, and you might be cranking it up and all of a sudden the receiver shuts off. And this is a potential reason why because here's the deal, when you're looking at um, most AV receivers on the market, at, at one watt, at 2.83 volts, an amplifier will operate like an ideal voltage source. So if you supply 2.83 volts to an 8 ohm speaker, you'll get one watt. If you supply 2.83 volts to a 4 ohm speaker, you'll get two watts. You've doubled your power. That happens on amplifiers in ideal circumstances. It happens at one watt on virtually every amplifier I've ever seen. But when you get to the amplifier's limits, 
whether it's the power supply limits or it's the thermal limits of the actual amplifier module itself, it starts becoming thermally limited or power limited. So if that receiver is rated at 150 watts at eight ohms, most receivers will not give you 300 watts at four ohms. They might give you 250 watts at four ohms. And then when you start driving a couple of channels, you start getting into the area where it starts going into its nanny control because it just can't dissipate that much heat. And that's what you got to be careful about with lower impedance speakers. So I wanted to show you um, a couple more examples here. Um, we had we recently reviewed the SVS Pinnacle Prime speaker, and I'm going to show you their manufacturer's page right here. So this is a tower that has three. I think these are six and a half inch woofers and uh, five and a quarter inch mid and a tweeter. So you got three bass drivers in parallel. You got the mid range that's probably in parallel, but it's got a high pass on it. So at low frequencies, it doesn't the equivalent impedance of the speaker is not going to have four woofers in parallel because they put a capacitor there to eliminate that problem. And that is a problem with some tower speakers I've seen. I've seen some pretty sloppy designs that have no uh, high pass on the mid range driver. So at DC, it's essentially four drivers in parallel and that impedance of that speaker dips down to like two ohms. Some receivers will have a problem at near DC at a couple of Hertz, especially if you're hitting bass and they're not, they don't have a high pass on this receiver. If you're not bass managing, that could cause receivers to shut off as well. So at the very low end of the spectrum, that could be a problem too. That's why when a speaker manufacturer gives you impedance spec, I'd like to personally see a graph. But if they don't give you a graph, I'd like to see a nominal rating. I'd like to see a DCR rating of the system, and I'd like to see a, a minimum rating. Usually the minimum rating tends to be the DCR of the system, but you rarely see that spec in a manufacturer's website. So SVS here, they tell you the nominal impedance is eight ohms. And that's, in my opinion, a useless rating. I'm sorry, SVS, I'm not bashing you, but most companies do this. But what is interesting is they actually give you a real sensitivity spec. So they rated IEC from 300 hertz to three kilohertz. And we went and we measured this speaker. And I wanna show you the measurements here. This is a very interesting phenomenon here. So if you look at this impedance graph, this is the impedance, that's the phase. If you look at the impedance graph here, this is really not an eight ohm system. You can see it dips below five ohms. I would really consider this a six ohm because if you do 0.8 of six, it goes down to about 4.8 ohms. So I would really consider this a six ohm, maybe even a four ohm speaker, but I would, tell, I would tell you it's a six ohm speaker. It's really not an eight ohm speaker. But the interesting thing is they rated at 88 dB sensitivity at 2.83 volts. We measured 90 dB sensitivity. So that almost compensates. They were like overly conservative with the sensitivity rating, but they were, not conservative at all with the impedance rating. Um, if, if I knew SVS well, and I know the guys there, I would almost think that the engineering people wanted to rate the speaker a six ohm speaker, but the marketing people wanted to call it an eight ohm speaker. So the engineering said, okay, we'll let you rate it as an eight ohm system, but we're gonna derate the sensitivity rating. And I think that's why they came out with the 88 dB, because if you work out the math and you switch from six ohms, uh, from eight ohms to six ohms, you get your 90 dB, which is what we measured. So this is a pretty benign load to drive. It's not a hard speaker to drive. In most cases, if you're driving a tower like this with multiple woofers and the sensitivity is 90 dB or so, you'll probably be okay uh, with a normal mid-price receiver. But I would caution you, if you're running a receiver that has nine or 11 amplifiers built in, I would use a separate power amp in this case for a big tower like this, especially if you're not base managing it. So I wanna show you a bookshelf speaker from Revel, and I believe they rated this as a six ohm speaker. And you can see here, um, it is about a six ohm. It's a, it's, it's a little shy of it, so a six ohm shouldn't dip below, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it shouldn't dip below 4.8 ohms. So this is actually closer to an eight ohm speaker. This is a conservatively rated speaker. You can see the saddle points here are above six ohms. The, the whole system itself, especially at high frequency, is very high impedance, like 12 ohms. So I would really call this an eight ohm speaker. This is a real easy load to drive. Um, 
it's got decent sensitivity at 86 dB for a bookshelf. That's pretty good. Or actually, I think they measured it at 88 dB, even though Rebel spec it at 86. So that's, you know, this is pretty much the pinnacle of engineering in a bookshelf speaker is here. And it's a high-end speaker. And there was no reason to make this a four-ohm speaker. I mean, it just, that's how it worked out. The, the woofer itself didn't need to be a super low in, um, resistance coil. Um, whatever they chose here, I don't know if it's a two inch or a three inch coil, this thing handled plenty of power. It had a lot of sensitivity and you know, it plays loud and plays clean. So that's what I just wanted to show you. And then here's one more example. Here's an RBH tower that's rated at four ohms. And you can see I have a dotted line here. Um, the IEC minimum for eight for four ohms is 80% of four, so it's 3.2 ohms. That's where this dotted line is. An RBH speaker doesn't dip below basically about 3.8 ohms. This is a conservatively rated four ohm speaker. So the only other thing I wanted to talk to you about, um, let me stop sharing my screen here for a minute. And I'm back. Okay, so I know there's a temptation, despite the fact I've done tons of articles, tons of videos on the receiver impedance switch, people still ask me, I have a six ohm speaker from brand X. Should I set the impedance switch on my receiver to eight ohms or should I set it to four ohms? And I will tell you every single time it's asked, always leave your receiver on the high setting, on the eight ohm setting or the six ohms and more setting. Never set that switch to the low setting. That switch is there for one purpose only. That switch is there so it lowers the output voltage when UL or CSA or whoever's doing the thermal tests on that receiver and they want to stamp a forum rating on that receiver, they derate the power. So they make that amplifier clip sooner at lower voltage so that receiver dissipates less power and it meets their thermal requirements so they could say this receiver is capable of handling forum speakers. You're actually going to um, cause more clipping and you're going to reduce your dynamics more by using the low setting. Regardless of your speaker impedance, always keep the switch on the high setting. So I think that's all I wanted to cover about this. Um, I hope you guys found this useful. The difference between eight ohm and four ohm speakers. It doesn't mean that one speaker is better than the other just because of the impedance. It's just really about design compromises and design considerations about really about the impedance of the drivers, about the woofers, about how many woofers are in parallel versus doing series connections inside the speaker. And it's about getting as much sensitivity out of that system as you can. So I would again say if you're getting four ohm speakers and you're running them full range, in most cases you don't want to use a receiver to power them when that receiver internal amplifier is doing, is basically powering all the other speakers in your system. Unless you're getting like a, a 60 pound receiver from 10 years ago that had huge power supplies in it, multiple output devices per channel, and could really handle uh, driving high, a low impedance loads, um, I would almost tell you to always get a separate amplifier when you're driving a four ohm, a real four ohm speaker, especially if the sensitivity is below like 90 dB and you like a lot of bass and you like to play it loud. Um, go with a separate amplifier. Amplifier power is cheap really not that big of a problem these days. And in fact, in most cases, you could reassign uh, un unused amplifiers in a receiver to say the back channels or another zone, and then preamp out to a two channel amplifier from Monoprice or Outlaw, Parasound. You know, there's so many brands out there, <clears throat> excuse me. So guys, I think that sums it up here. I hope I answered your questions on the difference between eight ohm and four ohm speakers. If you like this video, please thumb it up, please share it. YouTube's algorithm changed now, so if you don't get a lot of shares on videos within 24 hours, then it just dies. It just The traffic stops on it. So I hope you guys share this video, and if you want us to discuss this topic more, I'll have Matthew Pose on here again, and we'll talk about loudspeaker sensitivity, loudspeaker phase. We could go real nuts on this. We could do an hour broadcast if you want. No big sweat. I just like to keep things simple right now. So don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. You can go and submit your questions there if you want us to do dedicated videos on any particular topic. We also give you the content sooner there than you often see it on YouTube or on audioholics.com. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.